Good evening. Tonight we are here to hold the lottery for our integrated preschool program. I'm Lauren Dubow, the principal. And I'm Kim Sullivan, preschool coordinator. So tonight we are holding the lottery to determine admittance into the Hopkinton Integrated Preschool for the 2019-2020 school year. We have 37 applicants for 24 openings in the three-year-old program and 16 applicants for two openings in the four-year-old program. All families have been notified of their lottery number by the preschool coordinator, Kim Sullivan. We will fill these preschool openings via this lottery tonight. Applicants beyond this will be added to the wait list based on how the lottery sequence is generated. So how is the lottery going to work? We will be using the website random.org. With the click of a mouse, we will generate a list of numbers. And for our three-year-old program, we'll have 37 numbers. And that will randomly produce a single column format to determine who is um, accessing our three-year-old program. So as Mrs. DeBow um, plugs this into the sequence generator, I'm just gonna, going to outline what she's doing as she's doing it. So she's at the sequence generator now, and in the boundaries, she will type the number one in the smallest value box and 37 in the largest number value box. In the format column, we will fill in one so that the numbers will be in a single column format. Then okay. we'll click Get Sequence. And we are ready. All right, and the sequence is as <coughs> follows. So I will read these in order for this lottery. The numbers are 19, 10, 11, 27, 30, 32, 3, 25, 18, 33, 28, 6, 2, 16, 36, 13, 22, 14, 34, 37, 29, 35, 23, 21, 9, 7, 17, 12, 1, 4, 5, 26, 20, 8, 31, 24, and 15. I will now take a copy of this so that we can place this on our website. Um, try to make this a little smaller. It's got the timestamp there. We have more numbers than usual. That's a good yes. thing. I'm not fitting it in one. Um, we'll cut and paste it, if you will, just so everyone can get that. And there's that timestamp. Take another one, just in case. So the first 24 numbers on this lottery will be accessed for the three-year-old program. And now for our four-year-old lottery, we will get again use the same website. And the list of numbers 1 through 16 will be put in the sequence boundaries. We do have one set of twins that are assigned the same number in this four-year-old lottery. We'll go to Sequence Generator, get click Get se Sequence, and here it is. Our numbers for the four-year-old lottery are, are as follows. 13, 15, 6, 11, 10, 9, 2, 7, 3, 5, 1, 16, 4, 12, 8, 14. I encourage all waitlist families to please be patient over the next few weeks as uh, families who have been selected in the top uh, 24 or 2 uh, make their decisions whether to accept or decline the spot. So we will go down the waiting list in the order that it was generated this evening. And we thank you for the interest in our program. We do feel quite um, adamantly that we have a wonderful program. And as Kim mentioned, please be patient because we very often access the wait list. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Good night. Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, February 7, 2019 regular meeting of the school committee. I would invite uh, anyone who would like to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to do so now. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, 
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have a, uh, a good meeting ahead of us, I think, and I, we have no uh, listed recognitions, but does anybody have any recognitions that they would like to share that are not on the agenda? Okay. Yeah. Lots of good things going on. We can bring some back for the next meeting. So, and I do not see any um, student council here, but if they come in, we can jump to them out of order. And I think otherwise we're ready to go jump into our financial report. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Um, as you can see, this is the typical financial report that you've been receiving on a monthly basis. On the cover page, you can see that at this point in time, our current um, positive variance is around 60,000. Um, as you can imagine, that's, that's tight. But as we continue to march through the year, um, some of the other things will, you know, uh, at this point in time, if we have somebody out on leave, they're being paid for sick time and we're incurring a sub. So as the year marches on, sometimes they pop out of paid status and that starts to save us money. Um, some of the expenses as they start to wind down in terms of the actual needs, uh, classroom needs of the students in front of them, those will start to become more clear as well. Um, so at this point in time, again, we have a positive variance of 60,000. You can see below the payroll accounts and how we get to the variance for payroll, which is a positive 75,000. And the, below that, you can see the variance of how we get to a actual deficit in our expenses. Um, homeless transportation continues to be a challenge. Um, we received notice of two additional um, transport, homeless transportation that we'll have to be doing just today. Um, so that does continue to be a challenge. And of course, you never know when somebody is going to pop in and out of that status. So that's not something that we can predict, either you know, anticipate or predict. So we'll continue to watch that account. So that's where we are in terms of that. The next page gives you all of the positions. Uh, we're fortunate this evening that we are not asking for additional positions. So that's <laughs> been <laughs> Counter almost, almost a um, monthly ask. Um, so hopefully at this point we can hold steady at, at where we are in terms of that. The third page you can see are our revolving accounts. Um, again, you see what the current balance is and the amount that is anticipated to be spent, that offset FY19 budget, those are the amounts that is anticipated to be spent that is a direct offset to the budget. Um, you see the grants that are below that. And then the next page you also see our capital accounts, um, most of which are in progress. Some are complete. The FY19 projects will be completed in FY19. And then the bottom two are our carryover accounts. The Hopkins H HVAC will be completed uh, in this year, but the middle school auditorium um, is an amount that's been carried over. That was an article that was put on the 2017 uh, warrant for FY18. The original capital article was for lighting improvements and, air, and the addition of air conditioning. They did the lighting improvements, which left the 88000 for air conditioning, but the actual cost to add air conditioning to the auditorium is $250,000. So that article has not moved forward while we have existing systems that are not functioning. So we've been putting the capital money in getting our existing systems to function and replace before we begin to add systems. So. That's the status of those. Um, and then following that is the detail of each account, the projection, both the um, manual that gives you the projection and then the munis. So just so you have different ways of seeing the same thing. Any questions? Just uh, general, your uh, feel for the health, financial health. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's, we have not put any budget freeze on at this point in time, right. but 
You know, I just, I continue to watch and monitor. I've had conversations with each of the principals. You know, this account doesn't seem to be spent. Yes, we know, you know, the SMLs are looking at that and they're planning their, you know, to spend their money now. So we've been having those ongoing conversations, so. Yeah, because I recall from last year, around this time, or maybe even earlier, you had tried to put a budget freeze. And so, so far, you know, we have five more months, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, remaining. So you're not anticipating. It seems okay to you. You know, at this, at, I understand that right. there are unknowns. So Absolutely. last year being the first year, not really knowing the budget sure. very sure. well, not knowing the spending patterns of the school sure. very well, mm -hmm. I was uncomfortable. Um, this year moving forward right now and uh, understanding how the spending patterns work mm. um, and just having been here, I'm a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but it is tight. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's listen to the superintendent's report. Superintendent's report. So what you see on that first slide is just our, our new scoreboard. Mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of exciting, despite the uh, the winter backdrop. It looks pretty good, so I wanted to share that. I'm not sure why I'm not moving. Dr. Kavanaugh, is that a? I heard that's a sort of a multi-sport scoreboard. Do you I think know? that that might be true. I think it's true that it yes. can accommodate the different scoring for different sports. That is true. I thought so. Yeah. That'll be great. It is great. Hmm. All right, let's try it again, see what happens. Oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong view. There we go. All right. Uh, so yeah, this is really great. Um, last Saturday night, the Hopkinton Chinese American Association invited me to their New Year's celebration. They met in the Hopkins School. Um, I believe that there were about 250 people, and they had shared with me that 95% of the people in attendance are Hopkinton residents. Um, the food was authentic, plentiful, and delicious. Uh, the hospitality, honestly, was unparalleled. They were just such lovely hosts, and um, the children all did presentations afterward, and so, you know, lots of talent. It was really heartwarming. Um, so I uh, had a really lovely evening. I sat with um, the chair of the Board of Selectmen, Claire Wright, so we were both treated to this. And um, you will see on the next slide that uh, the kids brought this celebration into the Elmwood School thereafter. So this was the kickoff to the Year of the Pig. I learned an awful lot on that night. I had shared with the um, HCAA that only one other time in my life had I received the New Year's red envelope. And I had received the New Year's red envelope when, about 20 years ago when I had a student who brought me one. So on this evening, I got my second one in my lifetime. So Good. that was very lucky exciting. year for you. Yes, it will be a lucky year. Uh, so here you can see the children. It's beautiful. Um, they, yeah, isn't that amazing? Yes. Uh, apparently they had a friend who went to China and brought those dragons back in a suitcase for them. So now they are able to, to do this. And the last slide that I will show you is they brought the parade through the school. So the kids could come out and stand in the hallways and watch the dragons come by. So Gorgeous. it was pretty neat. Fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing they came in a suitcase. Cause <laughs> I know, isn't it? I just, they're huge. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and they did do a, a dragon dance on Saturday night that was really cool. Uh, so an update on the district strategy process. Um, it has sort of come to my attention that maybe we should have a conversation about the difference between sort of a strategic plan and a district strategy. And I think that maybe what has happened over the last several years is that districts have started to do something a little bit different. And through my NISIP program, this is the text that we use to sort of design that. Um, it is entitled Strategy in Action, How Schools Can Support Powerful Learning and Teaching. And the two authors of that are Rachel Curtis and Elizabeth City. So this is, I think, what's happening um, as we look at districts around Massachusetts who have superintendents in like their first and second years. 
So the big question then might be, how are district strategies different from strategic plans? Uh, and what we learn is that strategic plans are typically facilitated by large groups, sometimes third parties, but when you do a district strategy, typically the work is led by the superintendent and um, his or her leadership team. A strategic plan sort of takes that broad and incremental approach, um, but the strategy really focuses on doing just a few things and doing them very well. And when you even take a look at what your sort of buckets are, what are those few things going to be, there should be some sort of synergy between them. And the last piece is that a strategic plan is really altered based on new information, but your district strategy should be continually reconsidered and adapted as you keep going through those years. Uh, so your objectives would be a written set of prioritized and deliberate actions that should uh, drive significant system systemic improvement. And that's really sort of, you know, our goal is to see where we can take things in ways that will really move the ship forward. Um, I think sometimes what happens with a, a strategic plan is you get very wide, you know, and we're trying to do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things at the same time. Dr. Kavner, how is this different from, you know, the way I understood the strategic plan and ultimately the implementation is, you know, you have this broad vision, all these things that you want to happen in the district over a course of three to five years. My understanding was that the school improvement plans break those down into yearly chunks by schools, right? That, that's how it's been in place. So how, how would the district strategy fit into that model or is it going to change that model? No, you'll still have a, you know, your sort of strategic plan that the district has, but that will inform all of the school improvement forms, uh, plans. It should, in, it should inform all of the administrators' goals. It should inform teachers' goals so that, you know, realistically we are all working sort of in that same direction. Sure. And so in, in that space, where would the district strategy fit? More in alignment with the school improvement plans, you think? guiding that or is it going to be a separate document or no the district strategy will really inform those school improvement plans okay. so okay. say for example you know we decide that we have children whose needs are just not being met right and that isn't 100 percent of the kids but say it's 20 percent of the kids who are those children what is it that we need to do and you know each year you'll go back and take a look at that right to, to see how successful were we in year one did we do the right things are we on the right track All right, so you may have questions. What kinds of things can you expect to find in this? And right now, do we have a vision statement? Yes. Will you still have a vision statement? Yes. We have a core, core value statement. Will you still have one? Yes, you will. We have a theory of action. Will you still have one? Yes. Strategic objectives, will you still have them? Yes. Strategic initiatives, will you still have them? Yes. So the big objectives are those three sort of big buckets, and then the initiatives are the things that we promise that we'll be doing under sort of the umbrella of those objectives. And those will find their ways into the school improvement plans. So the question then becomes what makes this different? Um, and I'll just read to you what's in the green box. One of the biggest downfalls of strategy development is that it often lives only in the head of a few people. Right? So if this is going to sort of live in the head of heads of people, um, it really should be the building principals who are going to make sure that this stuff is what's happening in their schools every day. So that's sort of part of the thinking around why would you have your superintendent and your leadership team so integral in this. And the second thing is that the process helps the system approach improvement strategically rather than to improve by brainstorming all the wonderful things that you could do and then trying to do all of those things. And I suppose it doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to stop doing the things that are just really good everyday practices. But, you know, someone had voiced it to me in that sense of, so these are the things that we always do. What is it that we're going to do that would be new, innovative, different, something that really drives our work, our thinking, and pushes who we are as a school district? Those, I think, are the kinds of things that we would want to land in this strategy. So when we talk about, you know, teaching and learning or, you know, you know, some of the facets of that, like are we still going to be looking at differentiating reading in K to five? Elementary school teachers have done that for the last, you know, 100 years. So that might not be one of the things that we really want to think hard about because we do it and we're going to continue to do it and we're going to continue to do it well and we're going to continue to think about how to do it better, but it might not be one of those big things that we say this is really important in terms of moving the district. 
So just as a, a sort of let's, t let's analyze what we have in place now and think about how that might be a little bit different. If we think about Hopkinton's current first objective, it falls under the bucket of effective school leadership. And so the three things that were established six years, five years ago when this plan was written was to attract, develop, and sustain an effective school leadership team, establish clearly defined set of goals aligning the school improvement plans to the district strategic plan, and foster a collaborative culture open to dialogue and trust among faculty and staff. And I would argue uh, that if we look at those three things, I think we've been very successful in attaining those goals. Right? I think right now the building principles that we have are probably second to none. Right? The work that they do is amazing. They are invested. They're good instructional leaders. There's a good rapport among them. They actually have what I would call a true team. And their assistant principals are you know, sort of just as supportive and wonderful. We have an amazing admin team. So when you have a plan that lasts five years or six years, sort of in that older model, we have kept this the same all of that time, right? So what is it that we may have done to massage or change or update that as we've moved through the plan? Um, there's a, sort of a, a little bit of a stagnant quite a kind of a quality to, to where that is. Not that this isn't or wasn't at the time a really important plan. At the time, there was a whole lot of you know, unrest, I think, among the leadership team. And so you can see that we've been successful here. All right, so I had said that each time we meet, I would come back and talk about where we are in the process. And so currently, right now, we are in uh, sort of, we've already developed those surveys. Uh, there was a, a group of people who met on Tuesday of this week. Um, and Cindy Boney, who is our consultant, who has been trained by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, was there alongside Mr. Ev Mr. Bishop and Mr. Keller. And uh, Mrs. Kavanaugh's school committee was the, well, she was the school committee rep at the table, and then I was there as well. So we were a team of five. And we started with just sort of one sort of set of questions, and we anticipated that we might give that particular survey to every single person. And then what we decided was they would be more relevant because I think that the kids who inhabit our classrooms have a very different experience than the adults who sort of look in from the outside, or even, I think, from the teachers. So there's an adult survey and a student survey right now. Um, and that those should be going out tomorrow. Hopefully, they will be going out through the library, through the senior center, uh, social media, through the entire town. I think Ashok will be working with the townside technology folks to get it out there. And then to all the parents, uh, we have decided to give teachers professional time so that they can actually sit and thoughtfully go through this process. And the students will be doing this grades 6 to 12 in their English classes so that we can ensure that we are getting as much bang for our buck as possible. Um, just for maybe the sake of showing folks how that survey looks. Um, I'll just show you the adult one. Uh, and just so people know, we have sort of only one kid survey, but when you get to a particular question, it will ask the student if they are Hopkinton High School students or if they are Keefe Tech students, because we really wanted to hear from our kids who have gone away from Hopkinton and over to Keefe and to talk a little bit about what that experience was like, sort of making the leap and leap in their preparedness. So when they get to that particular question, depending on what they choose, it will bounce them to uh, a different set of questions based on if they're in Hopkinton or at Keefe. At any rate, this is the adult survey. So it just opens with um, some instructions and some uh, context for why we are conducting this survey. Uh, we let people know that while the ultimate goal is to help the Hopkinton Public Schools develop its next strategic plan, the present purpose is to establish district priorities. So there may be loads of people who say, these are all the things that I would like kind of on my wish list. But as we kind of call that data, which we will be doing over February vacation, I think the really important thing is to say, so what are the big priorities? What is it that people really see us needing to do in order to take ourselves to next level, not sort of we're still moving along? And, and doing a good job of it. 
So we ask what kind of learners and community members do you hope all Hopkinson, Hopkinson students will become? Think about skills, qualities, or traits you would hope our students and graduates would have. And we originally had most important and least important, and then we thought we were sending a poor message by saying least important, because these are all important, but if we are putting them in um, a descending kind of order, your most important value should be at the top, and your least important value, although they're all important, should be at the bottom. And um, you, this really asks you to prioritize um, no more than three to five. But you can see that I think only this number one is actually one that you would have to answer. The other ones are just if you would like to. Question two, in your primary role as a parent, guardian, educator, or community member, describe an experience where Hopkinton Public Schools helped, are helping students progress in those areas you listed above. Question three, as we look forward three to five years, what do you think is Hopkinton Public Schools' greatest opportunity? What is our greatest challenge? And they have long answer texts for those. What would you see as the difference between opportunity and challenge? So I think that it almost sort of follows like a SWAT kind of a protocol, like the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. Uh, so an opportunity for me, and I, I liked the very sort of progressive and positive language there. For me, the opportunity idea is, like, where can we really take this? Sure. Not just a strength, what are we already doing well mm. kind of question. Um, and challenge means that there will be some obstacles. So how do we get to a place where we can overcome whatever it might be that is, in fact, an obstacle? Right. In order for our schools to be successful at seizing opportunities and addressing challenges, what would you recommend the Hopkinton Public Schools continue to do, do differently, or stop doing? Oops, I don't have a red thing there. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. Uh, and question five just asks them to identify themselves, and you can check all that apply. So say, for example, you are a parent in the district. You are a Hopkinton High School uh, alumna or alumnus, and you are um, a town employee, you could check all of those, right? And then the last part, we simply thank people for participating, and we let them know where they can go if they would like to see a summary of the survey findings. That won't be there the moment you finish your survey. <laughs> that will take some time to get to the website. Um, and if people are interested in participating in focus group discussions, they will be happening on Saturday, March 9th. And uh, people can send that their interest into Georgette Wagar in the central office at that email address you see right there. Okay. Are they able to mark it right here in the survey if they're interested? Sorry, Mean, what was your question? If they're interested in participating in the two-hour focus oh. group, can the market write in the survey, provide their email? As opposed to sending an email, have it a space right. in there that would sign them up right. automatically. Yeah. I think I wonder. anonymous, right? I think, hmm? I think the survey's anonymous. Right, but if someone's interested and they want to, it could be just, yeah, it's up to you. That's yeah. fine. That's no, okay. These look like great questions. And I like that you've given room for response instead of just multiple choice. Yes. I think that's going to be really interesting to read and, and helpful for the district. Yeah, we felt like if you put multiple choice, you're putting the thinking in people's heads. Exactly. Yeah. I like the openness of it. I was very impressed with the consultant, and I know that she will be trying to tap into all of us some, but I think she's a really good person to, to help with this process. Great. Um, and, and so, Dr. Kavner, was that her, um, the district strategy, was that something that she recommended? So really the district strategy is something that comes out of my NISIP program. But I think when I had presented some of the materials from DESE, you know, they also say that some districts will choose to use your leadership team to sort of drive that, the district strategy okay. work. That's, it, it feels sorry. like that's the direction this is going. Statewide, I mean. It's exciting, though, to, to look ahead to where this is going. 
it is it exciting is to look ahead. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think when I was with the admin team real, lately, I was like, this is going to be really fun. And <laughs> they looked at me like, oh. Well, I really like the breadth of the distribution on the survey and the fact that it's going to the senior center and yeah. to the town as well as the school adults. Mm -hmm. And I love that the students are taking the survey in school because you'll get. Yes, that's right. You'll definitely that's get a right. lot of response. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And yeah, and maybe great. even a more authentic response. Maybe. You know, you feel like you're in that classroom, and yeah. I have my laptop, and I'm ready to go. It, it has a... Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. All right. Uh, and my last slide, just coming reports. Um, I've been in touch with the admin team, and I know that we have been thinking about reports on things like attendance, uh, substance abuse prevention, and I know that at the end of the school year, I am supposed to do a, I mean, because it's part of Mass General Law, a report on the incidence of bullying. Um, but I can give you an update now. In the district, we have had one report filed at Marathon, uh, and it was a no finding. One report filed at Elmwood, again, a no finding. None at Hopkins not at the middle school, three at the high school. One was a no finding, one was a finding of harassment, one was a finding of bullying. So that's where we are right now. Don't just as an update. I, can I just share it um, out of the policy sub working group, whatever we are, <laughs> yes. um, just as an FYI to the school committee, most of these three items are actually related directly to policies that we have. And a conversation was had at that um, working group about metrics around those policies, some of these policies, to see that it, that we're being effective with mm -hmm. the policies that we're putting in place. And so I think some of this is a response, which I think is great. Yes. Megan Cox, who works with Ashok, is working on the attendance data. And Mr. Bishop and his team, Mr. Hannah and Mr. Pominville, said that they would be happy to come and do a high school report, but they would prefer to wait until they get the results of this year's Metro West Health Foundation report, and I thought that made great sense because we'll have the most recent data. Dr. Kavanagh, there's something, um, you know, when you speak about attendance, uh, one thought on that, you know, you're doing a lot of the cultural sensitivity training in the district. Uh, one thing I have noticed is, especially for someone like me who has most of my family in India, and it's just me, my husband, and my son here, and when we take time off to travel to India, for instance, um, it's one, it's expensive. Uh, two, you have your family spread across the breadth of the country. So what ends up happening is that when you travel, you tend to travel for a longer duration. Let's say there is a wedding of, of a cousin, or let's say a grandparent passed away, like when my father passed away. So you take the child out in, in you know, you're gone for an extended period in time. So I, I would want, I don't know how that could be accounted for, and I wonder if there are other communities as we're becoming more diverse who have those situations mm -hmm. of the distance and families and, you know, the cost and all the other complexities that come with it. Um, something to keep in yeah. mind. I do think that that's becoming quite common in a lot of school districts in Massachusetts mm -hmm. that there will be people who travel for, you know, longer periods of time. Right, right. And I, I do agree with you that within our schools there needs to be a sensitivity to it. Right. Um, sometimes when, you know, even the admin council, when the whole leadership team is together mm -hmm. very frequently, you know, we will talk about even mm -hmm. sort of reminding ourselves about how important it is to respect the fact that people are traveling great distances, it costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. and when you are a half a world away, you really don't get to see your family very much. So it's good that when you go, you can go for a substantial period of time. Right, and you know, specifically, uh, I think I'd shared this in the past too, that when my father was in the last stages of his mm -hmm. life, uh, I felt it was very important to spend that time. Luckily, my mm -hmm. son was very young at that time and at center school, uh, the teachers and the principal and everybody was very, very supportive. We were gone for nearly a month, mm -hmm. right? And, and um, or maybe even a month and a half. Uh, but I think those are important things for children to see, mm -hmm. that you're there for your grandparents, doesn't matter the distance, doesn't matter the cost. And, you know, luckily he was in a younger grade, but what if a child is in Hopkins or middle school and how do you manage that and how do you make sure it doesn't impact negatively? So just putting that out there. Yeah, thank you. I 
have a, a question about the survey, mm -hmm. if that's all right. Um, are you providing the survey in another version to make it more accessible to people who have difficulty reading um, and who would prefer to sure. have the spoken text? Oh, that's a great. Because I know idea. at BU yeah. we have to submit our text material before the course, so mm -hmm. they can do recordings and make sure the syllabus can be listened to instead of read. Yeah, that's interesting because yeah. with our students in school, we obviously have a list of who needs sign language, who needs this translated into another language, which we, you know, do pretty readily. Uh, but I don't think we had thought of that. So. And even it's so easy with technology today mm. to offer people the opportunity to respond orally yes. to the questions instead of writing them down. I even think maybe at the senior center in the library or whatever, we should probably let people know that if they would like to do this paper pencil, they should be able to do that because there will be yes. people who don't have access to technology. Absolutely. The yeah. more options, the better and the, the yeah. richer the feedback. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that, uh, that's all for you? That is that all? Was, yes. Right. I mean, not all. It was very rich and deep, but I don't want to okay. cut you off with no, that point. So, uh, it, with respect to the school committee chair report, I have approved the warrants 19-069, 19-070, 19-071, 19-072, 19-073, 19-074, 19-075, 19-076, 19-077, 19-078, 19-079, 19-078, 19-078, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 19-077, 
through education station that they are going to be launching is they're going to have it free of cost a um, tips and strategies class for the entire anyone in the junior class that wants to do that and they will have information coming on that and then also they have brought in education station to offer an actual prep class uh, that will be available for the a fee for those who are able to pay but the youth commission is going to actually also guarantee that any student that wants to take it they will not let cost be a barrier for that so that they are collaborating with the schools to be able to offer that here in the schools. so that's I think a great benefit to our students and again so thankful for people out in the town willing to reach out and collaborate and make things like this happen so then uh, I also I did receive one email from somebody who is interested in school choice uh, in I, I think people wanting to choice into our district which we do vote just I wanted to highlight that for people at home we do vote annually on school choice as we're required by law uh, obviously with the st space constraints that we have had we have uh, in my recollection we have never had school choice in Hopkinton I don't know if before my time there was but um, that would obviously pose a challenge for us with the space constraints we have now so that and then next week uh, I'm sorry I've got a very long report tonight yeah, uh, which is wonderful Nancy <laughs> it's great next week uh, is the it, I, had, I think I gave the wrong date out erroneously last week, is the visions presentation that the Youth Commission is having. And it's not the whole Youth Commission, it's a subset of it uh, that Mina and I are going to attend on Tuesday to see if, and then we'll bring back what we learn here to see if that's something that we're interested in jumping in on with them or if we want to do a different training. So um, this diversity training. This is, yes, yeah, sorry, this is diversity training. Uh, and they, visions is the group that they're going to do, and they're going to do it whether we do it or not, but they've, invited us in as an opportunity to do it, to not have to fund for, so that we don't have to carry the cost of an entire training like that. It would be a great way to share some resources you know, and to give all of us that training. So that is, um, that is my week for my school Fantastic. chair report. So that is, are there uh, liaison reports? I know that you had. Right, uh, I, I have a few things actually, but may, maybe we'll start with the marathon fund committee. Um, so Marathon Fund Committee is reviewing the charge that they have and one of the things that it talks about is the membership and currently it says the membership uh, should be for, the, for one school committee member and the change that's being recommended is that um, a representative of the school um, school department so that makes it a bit broader I have thought about it quite a bit and my recommendation would be to go with school department because while we would want it to be someone from the school committee it leaves the room open that let's say if someone else uh, is able to represent us better at the marathon fund committee that's an option that we leave open and if you all think differently uh, you know you can let us know there is time for review of that um, besides that, I have some updates um, on the Marathon Fund Committee itself. Uh, the th uh, one thing that I'm trying to help them with is uh, set up a web page for them on the town site. Uh, so kind of, because a lot of people don't know the good work that they do and how important those small funds are for a lot of people in the community, a lot of groups in the community. So. Um, Carol Nathan, who is the chair of the Marathon Fund Committee, and I, we met and we kind of reviewed some thoughts on what that could look like. So I'll be working with Josh Grissetti and uh, a few others to kind of get that going. And um, the other update is on the school committee menu. Do you think uh, we that. could go there, uh, Dr. Kavner? Is that possible at all? Um, so we've been reviewing some of the content, uh, Megan and I, I know you have all provided, uh, you know, some of your bios and whatnot. We've been through that, but it's exciting to see some of it come alive. If we just go to our um, main page, we have been able to publish two aspects of it. One is about us, what is it that the school committee does, and the other part is the current members. What I was also hoping, as we're going through this, you know, the ideas keep coming up and uh, Linda Henderson and George Hetweger have been very, very helpful in getting some of this work done. What we are also trying to do is kind of give a nod to our previous members too, but that's something that we want to maintain separately. So this is, this is something we've all looked at, but the more exciting thing, uh, more than what we do, uh, 
for the people here, I guess, is also to look at, uh, Dr. Kano, if you don't mind going to the school committee menu, the main menu, okay. uh, and look at the five members, the five member board. So here's our uh, chair. And you can see some of the details there, you know, uh, what, which are the liaison roles, what, which subcommittees you're on, uh, what else are you doing as chair. Um, so try to put some of that together. So take a look at it. If you all think, you know, if there are any edits, final edits, we can always do that. I think this is a great way to share who we are with the community. And um, I think they've all come out very well. Well done. Well done. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And, and don't need to linger on the photos. Yes, can we shrink any just Why, why not? Right no, here. I think, yeah, right there, right? That and the previous one. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so too. I'm, I'm excited too, and there's more work to be done, obviously. Um, it's, you know, we've kind of set a cadence, but sometimes it's hard because, you know, we have OML and we want to make sure that everybody has had a chance to look at it and whatnot. So. Uh, we're going through that. So this is exciting stuff. So sorry, what is the current landing page? Is that the who are we? Like if uh, the you about us. School? The about us. If you clicked on just school committee, Dr. Kavanaugh, it'll show you what we what we do as a school committee. That's cool. I, I that well done. It's a much better landing spot than landing on our um, when our meetings are. And 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 you'll see <laughs> lots of good changes even on meeting agendas and minutes. We are now have the video link to HCAM. This was a, a, a you know suggestion from a community member. Um, so if you scroll down, you can see the video link right there, which takes you along with the minutes. Excellent. So this is exciting stuff, right? Small stuff, but I think it makes a difference. Great. Um, so uh, with my hat on from the website, district website committee, mm -hmm. are we um, working with Georgette and Linda, we're managing this content yes. now, so it can, yes. it can be fairly fluid as Yes, you know, yes, come up exactly. Year, right? right. So, uh, from a formatting standpoint, Linda has been helping, mm -hmm. and I have, uh, you know, we have access to edit. Yep. So, just the content wise, you know, a comma here, or a, you know, I added, for instance, the term for each of the members, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So, we have been working very collaboratively, and I had exactly the same question that should we wait for the, you know, switch over before we make these changes. It said, no, this is a good time to do all of it. So it's all good work. I mean, all this content creation will just bring over. So this is great work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I have a couple of other updates. The other one uh, was on the community communications group. We had a, I don't, I don't think I've provided an update since then. We had a fantastic meeting. Last month, Dr. Kavanaugh actually shared what the strategic plan process is, and we had members uh, from, you know, some new members who joined, uh, which was wonderful for them to hear. Uh, we had representation from Hopkinton Center for Arts, mm -hmm. and um, also uh, the Friends of the Library, um, the Hopkinton Garden Club, and uh, some usual suspects uh, <laughs> like Jim Cousins from HCAM and uh, Alexis Miller from HEF, and also Amy Beck. We congratulated her mm -hmm. for her new position. So it's it's been going very well, and you all know we have um, HCAM is doing the NPO workshop next week. Hopefully, some of you will be able to yes. join. Mm, so that's that, and. We have the Education Cooperative uh, Legislative Breakfast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So some of you will be there. And I think you provided the update on the Senior Center. One last thing I wanted to point out was on the planning board. Um, to be very honest, you know, I, I personally feel I could do a better job of representing and, you know, liaising, li my, in my liaison role with the planning board. I'd hope to attend once a month, but it's been proving a little challenging. Um, although the planning board, uh, you know, Amy Ritterbush actually reached out to us and talked about some changes in law that are happening to uh, 55 plus uh, community as in allowing, you know, younger children, which means that we cannot discount those housing that is restricted that you would not have younger kids. And that would mean an impact to the district. 
So that's something to watch for. Uh, but just putting it out there, if there are members who have been coming off of some uh, other boards or liaison roles and subcommittees, if they're interested in taking that on. That's it. And you shared uh, some of the work on the senior center front. Uh, I'm very excited that uh, there are some exciting ideas that were shared. And I'm looking forward to uh, the ball, possibly the senior ball we'll see oh, yeah. right so hopefully that will happen soon so we're plan okay. we're thinking about some ideas of how we can engage better with the seniors in town without uh, being too um, you know we want to pace it mm -hmm. i guess so that's well, it yeah. plenty lots of, of lots of exciting yeah a lot things. of exciting yeah. stuff I just have a, a couple quick reports Nancy's kindly covered youth commission so i don't have to talk about that no 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 um, the Special Ed Parents Advisory Council, we held our monthly parent support group this past Monday at the library, and we'll continue to do that every Monday, every first Monday of the month. Um, the district also very generously held what's called a safety first for families training for a lot of special needs parents. Um, and the first workshop was this past Tuesday. There's another one next Tuesday. And um, my husband went because I had another obligation and he said it was really wonderful and the training oh, was excellent how was um, the attendance Did you say? 30 people signed up 15 came and i think for the first week in february that's pretty, oh, good. Yeah, that's pretty good and there will be another workshop offered in april but russell shade and kim goodwin did an excellent job and we're just very grateful to have them there so the one that's being offered in April, is it the same one or is it the sequel it's the to the same sequel? one? Okay. Same yes. one. So I think if parents are interested, they should contact student services um, about this. And it's not just for parents of kids who have um, special needs. It's kids who are challenging in one way or another, as all children should be. Um, so I think that. Um, if people want to learn more about it, please contact Student Services. Thank you. Okay, good. I just have a quick update on the Little Engine That Could, that is the website committee. Um, we are meeting, I believe, Wednesday morning to review our quotes, which is very exciting. So we now have vendor quotes. We had narrowed it down to three vendors, and um, I think we've received two of our quotes so far. And we are hoping to come to school committee on February 28th to um, share which vendor we'd like to work with, what it will cost, where we are in the project plan, et cetera, with an and update. Will you show all of the options to the school committee, the, the, the ones that you just for comparison? If you would like, sure. I Absolutely. Be good yeah. to, to see you. We've done so much work on all of this. I am excited for Is I have to give a lot of... Um, a lot of praise to the technology department. They have worked really hard on this. Uh, Mr. Ghosh has been very diligent in um, communicating with the vendors, bringing questions from the subcommittee forward to the vendors, and really shaking out the quotes. And um, he's been, you know, excellent. And he has taken a lot of uh, feedback and a, um, a lot of. Uh, contributions from his team, who've also been fitting this in around their regular jobs. So um, I think. It, it's all it's all good and the, really the credit goes to them so thank you yeah. the only one thing i did skip over inadvertently because it was on a different window is we had talked about back when dorothy presser came in about having her back once we got through the budget and i was I wanted people to think about and you don't have to answer me now but just to kind of take back for when we come back again uh, doing a customized training not just kind of what the masc typically offers but things that we specifically feel like we would like as a group from her and I was thinking too, what might be a good conversation for us to have would be to get some feedback, and I don't mean to put you all on the spot, but from the central administrative team on how we can help what it, support what you're doing and how you feel like, it, just kind of a, a check in for how we're doing since we're looking at uh, you know formative sure. evaluation for you. It might be helpful for us to have feedback of what ways we could improve. So that just was one thing. And I if there's- actually have a rubric for you. But and then mm -hmm. other things we could talk about maybe in a future meeting of what people would like to get out of it and we could see, you know, at that point timing. So I'd, I'd like you know, I don't know what we're gonna interject, but I would love to 
um, add to the mix, looking at how we can tap the unique strengths of the five of us. Yes. A little bit, you know, to, to really exploit those for the benefit of the group. Yes, and, and team building Yeah. in general, I, yeah. I think really. I think when I look at where we started back in the summer to where we are now, I feel like we've really come together in a team in different ways, but I think we still have so many more exciting things we could reach. So that was my, my, my last thing I was going to say on the, my report. And so that will bring us into then um, new business. So that brings us to the Metro West Health Foundation start. So you, you perhaps know that the middle school is in its third year and um, in the final installment for their Metro West Health Foundation grant. And you also know that any grant money that comes in has to be approved by the committee. So what I am recommending is that you approve the Metro West Health Foundation final installment for the middle school start program in the amount of $36,562.50. So moved. Second. Motion by Mina and a second by Amanda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous and Aye. passes. And that brings us into budget transfers. Thank you. Um, just again to look at some of our expenses where, you know, the budget is a little bit out of line of actual. This is just to clean up some of those. Um, so the telephone, really just a couple of configurations, um, switching around to get these budgets to really line up to what the actual expenses are. In middle school, some of their um, requests went a little over budget. So just to kind of clean those up. So looking for a motion on that. Yes. So moved. And a second. second. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And that brings us into uh, school committee feedback on the superintendent's formative evaluation and I know that we did um, you did a lovely presentation last time and just to sort of open this this is our opportunity um, to give Dr. Kavanaugh some feedback on things we hope to see more of between now and when we do her um, summative evaluation which we will do um, over the summer I guess really yeah I can, uh, did you yeah, want to I, well, share something? I, I was just going to add that when we think about the summative evaluation, we may want to think about, you know, sort of town elections and if we want to make sure that that happens in May. So that's something really for, I guess, the five of you to think about when that will happen. If you, you mean as before versus after town elections? Yes. You know, we had attended that meeting at the Cape and we saw that various districts have various models. So if you've been on the committee all year and then you're no longer on the committee but the superintendent is evaluated in like late June, sometimes folks will come back just to do the evaluation. Sometimes they'll go with just the people before you. Sometimes they'll go before there's even an election. So that's something to think about. How, how do we establish that? Do we have to establish that officially, like in a policy that says that we officially um, want to include those voices who have just rolled off? I mean, do, can it be informal or does it need to be formal? What I think is that historically it's always been done before the committee changes. But, you know, in the absence of a policy, that's been the practice. So you're assuming that the person that's running for re-election will not be on the committee? I just want <laughs> no, I'm not making any assumptions. Okay. I'm just saying that we had that conversation. I'm just messing with you. I know. I won't say anything else now. I'll let you talk. I can, I can go first. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I looked at all of your, um, what you had done, the way I look at it as self-evaluation and some of the aspects that you shared. And I was trying to um, also look at things that I experienced working with you, um, and you know, whether through these meetings or offline and whatnot. So putting that into context, all of that, I, I just want to, I jotted down some thoughts. Um, so one thing is very evident that you've been working very hard in this role um, and addressing the very challenging and involved demands of this role. I don't think um, people understand fully how complex the role that you're playing is. Um, it's not easy to learn the intricacies of this role while building a new strategic plan. Um, I felt you took a bigger bite at the time of goal setting. I was trying to say, 
Do you want to hold off on the strategic plan? Do you want to focus on the growth? But you chose to take a big bite there. Um, I found you to be a listener. You're willing to listen to what the board is saying, um, assess it and come back to it in, on your own terms, uh, which I appreciate. You were willing to visit the seniors. You know, this is something we talked about over a period in time. And you're busy. You have so many things going on, but you didn't put that aside. You made the time and are working on partnering to hear from them. Um, you joined the community uh, communication group and shared information and your approach with leaders in the community who would otherwise not have access to you. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that you're willing to reach out to different uh, groups within the community. Mm, I gave you some specific feedback on tech, the fact that they were putting in $90,000 um, in a program. And in the past, we have not utilized it. Mm -hmm. And it's a big investment they're putting into educators. And you consider that, and you're advocating for mm -hmm. using that opportunity and asking our um, staff to make use of it. Um, you're making an effort towards differentiation. I'm, I'm very glad that we're at least acknowledging that not all learners learn the same way or at the same pace. I know it will take time, um, but I'm happy that, that, that change is happening. You're also making effort towards inclusive voices and culture. You've made time to meet with everyday people in the community, you know, whether it be folks who came to you, uh, like Dr. Singh, and given them your ear and try to assess that and put that into consideration when you're coming up with proposals. You're willing to explore options for a 18 to 22 program. Uh, that's exciting. Um, I also feel that you've been putting student experience in the center. That's my general observation. You never forget that they are core to all of this. Um, I've seen you interact with students. Your willingness to have a high school student apprentice with you is noteworthy. Um, I also find that you keep yourself abreast of practices in the educational field. Mm. When I share an article with you, you not only research, but share five other quality resources with me. For instance, um, you know, we talked about diversity. You had, you not only researched, you mm -hmm. came back with more. Um, there were also instances um, such as uh, project-based learning. You shared more information related to Buck Institute. So I think you make an effort not only to keep yourself abreast, uh, but also share that wealth of information. I've also seen you um, give an opportunity to your team to present. So it's not all about you, but you're letting your team shine through all of your goals. I see them come up and stand in front. Um, obviously, you know, I see all this, um, and uh, we are a demanding team here. <laughs> we, we, we want the moon, and, but we know that it'll take time. It'll be, uh, it'll take time. Mm -hmm. um, in the remainder of the year, I'd like to see you make bold moves mm, towards each of these goals. That'll bring out the following tangible initiatives with town partners. For instance, the civics program that we have been talking about. These are just thoughts. Um, I am sure you will consider this and bring them in your own light, in your own style. Um, team building activities, perhaps, that build better relationship with our town, specifically the town manager, perhaps, and town officials. A system that measures how achievement of your goals is impacting our learners. What is the impact on the ground? For instance, the diversity initiative that you're working on. Is it helping our students who have faced discrimination? Has it had an effect change? 
the delta, even if it is minor. Again, these are all things for you to think about. Um, I'd like to see you be a stronger administrator um, who works to uh, bring more transparency in our processes and inspires your team to do the same. I'd also like you um, to look into fully understanding our student body needs, document and share the same. We have children who are dyslexic. We have children who are twice exceptional. We have children who have auditory processing issues. We need to bring all of this to light. What are the needs of these kids and how are we addressing all of this? Um, I'd also like you to consider listening to our youngest learners. They have opinions, they have experiences, our kindergartners. They matter, their voice matters. Um, I would like to see the formation of EL PAC, the English Learner PAC. Um, I'd also like you to strengthen your conflict resolution strategies. Some difficult conversations have occurred and will continue to occur. I'd like you to explore how you can be stronger at it. And I hope you continue to use this board as your sounding board. We are here as your partners. So use us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've already asked you several questions by email, and so I'm not going to go over um, those are more detailed about things that we've already talked about publicly. Um, I think you've done a really impressive job in a deeply flawed system. Um, I think, you know, public education, there are so many wonderful intentions afloat, but sometimes I, I struggle um, to understand how every kid is benefiting from the structure of the day as it stands. Um, not enough recess time for those kids. Um, thinking about the envir environmental factors that lead to discipline, discipline problems. But you know all this. I mean, I, I think I'm alternative in my approach to education. I think kids need to be taught more independence. But beside that, I think you're doing an amazing job. I think that your disposition as a superintendent is admirable. Um, because one thing you taught me is that you'd like to introduce into the, into the admin and the staff and even us a sense of healthy discomfort to help us grow. Now, those aren't your words, the part about growing are not your words because that would be patronizing and you're not patronizing. But I love that notion because I think that I can praise you to the skies, and I really could. I think you've done a fabulous job in many, many respects, and I feel very honored to be working alongside you. And I'm learning a lot from you. Um, but I also, um, I think that there's still some difficult conversations to be had, and I hope as a board we will have these difficult conversations. Uh, diversity in staff. Um, I think you really have to work hard to achieve that, and not just diversity in ethnic background, but diversity in ability to. You have to consciously seek out individuals <laughs> and bring them into the district to interview, because I feel like we have uh, students here who struggle, who don't have role models who look like them, or who are like them. And I, this is a great district. We have fabulous MCAS scores. It's tremendous. But at the same time, we have kids here who really struggle with this institution um, and all of its rigidity and its, its secrecy. Parents are not allowed in, you know, unless we're buzzed in. Um, in many ways, it resembles a prison. It does. Um, so I think that we can work harder on providing the students with role models with whom they feel a, a very keen affiliation. Um, and they feel that there are people like them who've succeeded out there. Um, 
I also think we need to work hard as a district to talk about disability as a form of diversity instead of disability. I think we need to start changing the language around this stuff and quit spewing out special ed, special needs. Kids are different. We're all different. Let, let's celebrate the presence of people who are not like us. Um, but I worry about categorization and the effect, long-term effect it has on parents and kids. Um, I still worry about the parents of many kids with special needs here who have struggled for years trying to get appropriate accommodations. And I know that's not you, you've just come on board. Um, but I think we have to be mindful of their struggles. Um, I really meant to say just glowing positive things, but you know what happens when I start to talk. <laughs> I do. You know, and you know that that's just the nature of the bats that fly out of my mouth. Because I think you're doing a, a fabulous job, and I think you are working towards increased transparency. I agree with Amina in that respect. The more transparency, the better. More information we all have, the better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's kind of news to me about the Columbus Day fracas. And, you know, I should know about this stuff, because I'm the one who's waving the flag of the indigenous people, <laughs> right? We, we all supported you, Meg. It's, it's, yes, I know. It, I know. it, it no, is not I'm a just, rocket. It's right. a, no, but you know, let's let's have these open conversations Ooh, about that's stuff. Why, that's why the I brought it back. More information, yes. the better. That's why I'm bringing it back um, so that we can have the conversation. I just meant to say you're not alone in it. I know I'm not alone, Mina. Thank you very much. Let me find more of my compliments because they really are here. <laughs> <laughs> I I really appreciate your research skills. I can't tell you how much it means to me that you actually do research and you read books. Now that might seem kind of simple-minded of me to say, but nobody does that anymore. So few people actually go and they do the research to find out what techniques are effective with students. And I really credit you with working hard to keep apprised. Um, I think you're very respectful to parents. You understand the complexities of their various situations. Uh, you have listened to every parent who has come to you, and you've always listened with respect and grace and kindness. Um, I don't feel like there's some hidden agenda lurking there. Um, and that's what's really beautiful about you as a person. I, I think you uh, uh, provide appropriate oversight to the admin and to all of the teaching staff who really like you and respect you. And that's what makes a good leader, isn't it? Someone who can garner the respect of the majority of the people they work with. And I think another quality that makes a good leader, and I'm certainly not capable of this myself, and that's why I'm not a leader, is when things go wrong, it's really important to admit they've gone wrong. So this is one of the things in the future, I hope that we can all work on. When things aren't going well, to be able to say, oh, really screwed up on that one, guys, and attend to ways to fix it. All right, clearly I've said enough. <laughs> that is me. I love going third because my eloquent colleagues have covered uh, much of my content. So um, I've had the honor of you know getting to know you for the last six months, and I, I echo 100% um, that it, it really is an honor. I, you know, it's been an honor for me and unfortunate for you because it's been my first six months. So I feel like you know, I've got to learn from you, and you've been had the burden of teaching me. So <laughs> apologies, um, but you know, I, I I have a lot of respect for the way you have taken our tremendous leaders in the district and really knit together a team a tremendous team of leaders. They were already a team, and I think you've only enhanced that. And I think that trickles down to the classroom. That kind of camaraderie is reflected in um, all the work that goes right down to the students. So that is it um, was really important to me, and I was really glad to see your uh, efforts there. Um, I completely echo Meg in my respect for the way you have not shied away from even difficult conversations. Coming in, I think within a month, um, introducing the importance to you of diversity and inclusion and making it a goal and facing a, a very complex topic that cannot be fixed with the flick of a switch. 
and starting the difficult work that will just continue to go on and on and on. I think there was that um, TED talk about it's like brushing your teeth, and I think it really is. And so, you know, you don't get a lot of gold stars for brushing your teeth. You just do it. And so it, it can seem like the work isn't happening, and your commitment to that has been really important to me. So I thank you for that. Um, you know, I think regarding your goals and the rubric, I mean, you've touched on a lot of things. I think you're well on your way um, to achieving your goals. I think, you know, obviously, um, like I said, with diversity, you came out strong. There's a lot going on. Um, with the strategic plan, I'm really excited about the survey. I'm really thankful for the um, opportunities for the community to participate, and I think um, the breadth of your investigation will inform your work. So I, I'm thankful for that. Um, and, um, you know, just a few areas, I don't want to belabor all the points you made, so a few other things. I would encourage the community and the, the parents and students out there to, to speak to you, to get to know you. And I'm hoping that uh, as you continue to sort of, sort of take root in your role, that you speak more to the community as well. Because I think there's a huge amount that we can learn from your experience and your knowledge, and I think um, there are parents and students out there and, and guardians and families who haven't maybe taken an opportunity to share with you. So mm -hmm. I encourage people to engage in the strategic planning. But even aside from that, I think you're very approachable. And when you're presented with an issue, whether it's transportation or special ed, or you have a conversation, you accept the, the challenge, and then you address it. And I think um, the community should be aware of that and, and know that you have an open door. So that's, I appreciate that. Um, what else? Um, I think um, the only other thing I would say for now is that I'd echo Mina in that, or maybe it was Meg, or maybe it was both of you, in that um, I hope that the school committee can um, collaborate with you when you need assistance, especially um, as you need to tap into the, the will of the community or um, understand how people feel about things or, you know, I think that we can definitely play a stronger role than we have. Um, and I encourage you to, to use us as a group. I know you tap individuals, but I think actually, as I mentioned um, with our future team building, as a group, we are quite strong. Mm -hmm. uh, we have very different strengths and abilities and we're complementary. And I think that together with our sort of group think, we can help um, as a unit to provide some feedback. So I would encourage that. Thank you. Thank you. That leaves just me, <laughs> unless Jen comes in. Which, uh, so I, I want to start by saying I don't think I know anybody in any prof profession in any aspect of my life who works harder than you do in longer hours. And I, I know I receive emails from you that are written at 3 a.m. I then hear from you again at like at like six. no, but I, I think to me, and then you know I know you're out at different community events like on a Saturday night and things that are really important in our community. But I also know that you're a human being and you have as many hours in the day as the rest of us. I'm trying to figure out how you fit in as much as you do, but I I sincerely appreciate all that you put into it because I know that we are a quirky and a demanding and diverse as individuals to work with. Uh, Who's I'm the quirky one? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm quirky. Who's demanding? Okay. I'm quirky and I'm demanding. The rest of you are angels. Yeah. All right. And I'm um, demanding. But, but I don't mean quirky in a bad way. I, I mean quirky is a good way. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, but, and you find ways to balance the uh, differing opinions that we have and we're all coming at you with we have, we, we would like to see this or that or, and different people want different things, but you find a way to bring it forward in a way that is, I think authentic to your voice, but also reflective of that you have received the feedback from us as a group. Uh, I also noted at the Board of Selectmen's meeting that we were at this week, and this is also feedback I have received from other town board members as well, that, that you have worked very well and very collaboratively with our town leaders in a way that I think really has changed the tone this year. And, the way that we have gone forward with the budget, it's obviously it's a very big increase that we we're able to work with with the town. Uh, but I, f I felt like we were well received in spite of it. And I think you did a really nice job of making the case, of making the presentation, um, and, and Susan as well. But uh, it, um, 
it shows, and I think it shows in the tone that I hear in feedback from other town leaders. Uh, I, I, the forums and things that you've done, I think, just are reflective of who you are and how you work with people. And, and as other people have said, you listen to all parents. I have had a number of parents who have contacted you individually say they couldn't believe that they were able to get in to meet with you on a particular issue, like two or three days after they, and I don't want to put that out there because now everyone's going to expect that. But no, but that's, again, I know you have a tight schedule. You have a lot of things that I think most people don't even realize that the superintendent is holding. Is It's, it's a big, broad picture that goes way deep. Uh, and you still are able to make time for parents with individual concerns about their students and so that they feel that they their concerns and their children are important. And I think back to what Nina said, to, I think it was you at the beginning, um, that the student experience really is central. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the reports that you bring with the, the visuals. That always helps to really make it clear in my mind. Uh, and you're not afraid of creative, out-of-the-box thinking, which I appreciate as well, because we have definitely, you know, there are challenges that come at, and I say us all at this table, and, and people that aren't here, obviously, with us, uh, a lot thrown at us that is complicated and not easy, quick solutions, and able to sit with different things. In terms of looking between now and the end of the year, I, I don't have a lot of very specific feedback that I, I wouldn't have already given you along the way, but... I was looking at the, and I really like the document that you had shared about the questions that people have. I don't know if people had seen yes. that come in the email, and I was struck, and I know you spend a lot of time uh, responding to questions that we have collectively, but when I looked at just the, and I didn't look through every date that you had, but just the questions that you, and I assume Susan maybe was helping on some of those too. I didn't read the oh, entire she, document. she was the okay. answer of but, the okay. ones, but yeah. it's, it's a lot of information that, and must take a lot of your time dealing with our questions. And I'm wondering if there's a way to streamline and make that process better. I, I appreciate that we all will have access to that. And I just, I don't know the, if there's a better way that we could ask the questions or bring it in a way that would make it less time consuming for you, but still allow the information. So that's. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I think it's easier just to have face-to-face -face conversations than email, only yeah. because. It takes time to type. It takes time to type. And you can say it a whole lot faster than you can type it. Um, but I do think it will be important to sort of keep putting that information out because sometimes I find that a question that one person has is a question yes. that even if we answer, answer it through email for one committee member, then when we get to the meeting, somebody else will ask it and we'll kind of go through it again at the meeting. So I think the more information we put out, the better it is Absolutely. to everybody on the committee. Absolutely. And I know it, over specific things that have come up in the past, there have been questions that I didn't ask that I know other people have asked. And, it benefits all of us to have that information when it we're does. making a decision. I just yeah. so I appreciate the document and the share, and I'm I'm hoping that we can find ways to I don't know kind of keep that going. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I think you know the only thing that we have to be careful of is it, it just can't sway a member's it, it, vote. Or yes, anything like that, but anything it's that's just informational, information. I think we can push out, push yeah. the information out, so that we're abiding by open meeting law, but still allowing right. people to have equal access to information. Mm -hmm. uh, is a so I think a great going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. that's all I've got. I mean, sometimes we keep them going for meetings that Jen and I have, or Susan and I have. We have the same kind of a document. So I got to thinking, why wouldn't we just do that here, too? Yeah. So. Well, in that day, some of these things Although I know. they keep the document, they're really good. <laughs> some of the things I know the budget goes on, you know, comes up at different times. So it's nice to be able to look back at it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and I will. Well, thank you all. Here. <laughs> no, it's just brilliant. No, we are, we're please. totally on time. Oh, we went I've got a slow to seven fifty to eight twenty. That so will be in my evaluation. The only thing we've ever adhered to on the agenda. So uh, I do want to take thirty seconds on um, you know some of the things, the questions that you had shared. I am hoping that some of it we can institutionalize. You know, I recall asking a billion questions of Dr. McLeod, and I would always start off by saying. You know, I'm sorry I have all these questions. I would always end with, thank you for your patience with my questions. And so I see a lot of that repeated. And so I'm hoping mm -hmm. that we can um, document some of this, like what's a revolving fund? You know, uh, you know, how does a grant work? So uh, perhaps a future agenda item, you know, we've been looking at some of the processes and whatnot. Yes. Uh, of course, there are some questions which would be very specific. Uh, but if there are things we can lift up.
Yes, it's really a great and ties into all the work that you did on the new school committee orientation stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, also, I think the community will benefit from things like what is a revolving sure. account, mm -hmm. and I mean, Absolutely. just having that available just in general, general. Yeah. Right. I think it's useful. Yeah. More, more to come on that. More to come. Okay. Well, thank you. And, oh, and thank you all. Thank you for withstanding having this done in public. <laughs> well, and what a horrible thing to happen to anyone. <laughs> in public, but the, one of the, the next one's worse. Yeah, but more. this is just wrong. Why? Yeah, this you is know, just I, practice. I don't <laughs> know. Okay. I just would you it want is, us to do this to you? Why not? Sure. It's a tremendous thing Oof. for the public be able, to be able to access and to have insight into. But I think as an individual, I, when I have my performance evaluation, for my job, I don't hope to do it public. Mm. <laughs> um, exactly on TV. On right? TV, um, which is all the yeah. Kudos all the more for you for yes. continuing to smile. <laughs> so. But but you know, I, I personally feel that as public officials, you are scrutinized yes. publicly, and uh, you know, th I think this is a much better forum than Facebook. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I I agree. I I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that it must be excruciating. Talking about the um, the superintendent's form and evaluation, I can go before we move on if you want to. Public evaluation. Public evaluation. So, Very good. Anyway, so that. Did um, you have anything to say? No, carry on. Okay, please. all right. Ahead. So that um, brings us up then for our opportunity for public comment. Uh, I do not see anybody unless they're hiding behind the stacks here for public comment. Uh, so if that is the case, we will move into items by consensus, which puts us ahead of schedule. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, just Jen. in time. <laughs> yeah. in, unless you wanted to make it. Do you have, it, 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 no, really. No, no, it's okay. Go or ahead. any liaison reports. No, no, no. We we go went, we're, we're good. You were good. I appreciate you coming anyway. All right, so items by consensus. Okay. As superintendent, I recommend that the school committee vote to approve the items by consensus as outlined in your agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And yeah. That um, passes. And it then I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Oh, so moved. Oh, nice. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. Yes. <laughs> we are, we are well adjourned. done, Jen. <laughs> Very well done. We are adjourned at 8:22, and our next regular meeting is at, on February 28th at 7 p.m. And I see that is in the HCAM studios. Um, Oh, little agenda here, so I'm assuming that is correct. Oh, the bright lights. So thank you all, and have a very nice uh, February break.